Good evening everyone and welcome to night number three of our Battle of Los Angeles. We've had all our first round matches now. We move on to the quarter finals. Four big matches for you tonight. Well, five actually. So we've got a nice little one squeeze in the middle as well. First of all, our first quarter final will be Hunter Hurst Helmsley versus Bray Wyatt. It's been an interesting one. Two very different styles. Attitude Era versus current day, of course. And I think these episodes should be a little bit quicker now. The first couple were very, very long because of the fatal four-way eliminations, but we've got four, oh, sorry, five singles matches for you tonight. Four in the quarterfinals, then one little uh, special attraction match squeeze in the middle. And of course, we're down to the final eight now, all looking to try and become our first SWE World Heavyweight Champion. We've got the four quarterfinals tonight. Oh, that's a big. We've got a bit of a jumpy going on there. Uh, four quarterfinals tonight. We've got uh, the two semis tomorrow. And the final the day after that. But I do apologize. The cats are playing with the toys in the back because he heard that squeaking noise. It's very uh, jumpy at the moment, isn't it? Oh, what is going on with this? It is struggling. I don't know if that's coming through on the video or not, but I'm getting a lot of, uh, a lot of lag here. Hopefully that eases off, but Bray in firm control early on this match. Triple H struggling to get any offense in whatsoever. There's the old commentator's curse there as Bray gets a big elbow in the head, but able to turn things straight around. But Triple H once again turning things around. Of course, Bray was able to win the fatal four-way involving the, uh, the cult leaders. That was Bray Wyatt, Mr. Brody Lee. It was Raven, and it was The Undertaker. Well, Triple H won... The uh, the Attitude Era style Fatal 4-Way Elimination uh, with The Rock, Stone Cold, Steve Austin and Cactus Jack. So I do, you can hear them in the background, I'm sure you can. They're running around like absolute madness. They're right in a mess. There's a lot of lagging going on, I do apologise for this. There's the pin by Triple H. Referee is incredibly slow to get down. Not even a one count there, though. Bray went for a clothesline. Misses. Triple H catches him with that DDT. Right in the heat. Bray fighting back with a right hand in the gut. Now takes Triple H. Springs him off the ropes and over the top. Crashing to the mat down below. I'm quite sure what the plan is for Bray in the future. Of course, he's been a bit... I don't know... I feel like the Fiend character was massive, massive, massive last year. And they just halted him so much with that loss to Goldberg. And then I think as time has gone on, he's sort of still there. But I don't think he's as hot as he was last year. I mean, with feuds against people like Randy Orton and that, I suppose. But I'd be interested what does happen. I've got a feeling this weekend could be something interesting. We've got a lot of lag on this. It's shocking. I don't know if it's coming through on the video or not. If it's just my... Uh, me watching it or not. I do apologize that you can see the lag. It's only a two count though after the sister Abigail by uh, Bray Wyatt on Triple H there. That could have been enough there. I'm really getting concerned with this actually. I don't normally get it this bad. Like, the odd glitch here and there is not completely out of the question. Triple H now taking Bray down. Give me a, bear me a sec, I'm just going to go into a different window and just close some stuff down just in case I'm lagging the computer out. There we go. That should hopefully speed things up. I'm in the wrong program. I can't see what's going on. I do apologise. Where am I? And we're back. As Bray White gets another two count there. Not quite sure what led to that, but he got another two count there on Triple H. Hunter, Hurst, Helms, if you will. There's the Saito suplex. It's still bad, isn't it? Hmm. Hmm. Maybe it's me. I've got um I brought like a really good editing program for like 90 quid. Really expensive, but I just uh I find the simple free ones a lot easier to use, but obviously it's not giving me the right quality, is it? That's the problem. Because this is really glitchy. Bray Wyatt now dropping his entire body weight across the the stomach of Triple H who has been busted open. He's wearing that crimson mask as now Bray goes down and looks to choke him out.
And Brain, firm control of this one, actually. I'm a bit surprised here. I really thought this would be a, uh, a Triple H victory here, allowing him to move on to the next round. But he's already been taken down by one sister, Abigail, as Bray stalks for the second in. This has got to be it. Two sister Abigails, surely enough. It is as well. Well, there we go. Wow. That surprised me. I wasn't expecting that. I really thought the Triple H would be the uh, the main one here tonight. But uh, Triple H, as you can see, not happy rolling to the outside. Not happy with himself at all. He has just wasted the opportunity to move on to the next round. And Bray Wyatt follows the buzzards all the way into the semifinals. Wow. Hunter not happy at all. Right, we move on to our second quarter final. First of all, we have got Kazuchika Okada going up against Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. Uh, now, of course, Okada got there here by winning the New Japan style Fatal 4 Elimination involving Kenny Omega, Hiroshi Tanahashi, and Kota Ibushi. Whereas Ricky the Dragon Steamboat won the, the classic one, if you will, involving Sting, Ric Flair, and Macho Man Randy Savage. So both have done incredibly well to get here. I believe Okada was the only person from the first round. Am I wrong? No, two people did actually. Okada and Bret Hart were the only ones to get all the eliminations and win the match. And you'd think that momentum would help them as well, actually, thinking about it. I mean, Steamboat only got one elimination, which was the winning match, of course. Uh, Macho Man eliminated the other two people in that match, and Steamboat got the win. Uh, but Okada managed to eliminate all three of his opponents, Omega, Ibushi, and Tanahashi, and win the match, which is incredible, really. It really, really is. Okada back up. Strong right hand in the gut. Boot in the gut there by Ricky Steamboat, who uh, I'm still surprised beat Savage. It was them down, it was them two in the last two, and. We saw Savage hit several big, big maneuvers, several big, uh, several big elbow drops and that sort of stuff. And eventually, it was enough for Steamboat just to hit one cross body and steal the win. Really, Steamboat here now pulling back at the arm of Okada. Looks quite painful with Okada able to roll through. I suppose Steamboat's thinking if he can weaken that arm, then that's going to make it a bit more difficult for Okada to potentially go for a Rainmaker clothesline towards the end. Only a two count there. Steamboat follows up with a monkey flip out the corner on Okada. Steamboat now brings Okada back up to his feet and twisting the arm, but Okada stiff forearm right in the face of Steamboat. And there's a big elbow by Okada as well. Okada now sending Steamboat spine first into the corner. And Okada just absolutely flattens Steamboat. And I mean, I would put Okada down as a favourite for this one as well, but I said I, I put him, I put Steamboat down as the underdog for the previous match he was in. He still managed to come out on top, but there is a Rainmaker. That could actually be enough. Okada with the pin for the one, two, and three. It is, it is. Okay, so Okada defeats Steamboat. Boom, big victory there by Okada. That puts him through into the semi finals. So we now know Bray Wyatt and Kazuchika Okada both move into the semi-finals. What else we got tonight? I think we've got AJ Styles versus Samoa Joe and Bret Hart versus Chris Jericho, I believe. Yeah, but those are the other two quarter-finals. But before that, we got another special match for you. We're uh, rocking some, some PWG-style stuff with uh, two fantastic uh, young up-and-coming talents. First of all, we have got Darby Allen. And he is going up against Warhorse. So this should be a fun one. 
Darby Allen versus Warhorse 2. Incredible young talents. I'm surprised that uh, AEW didn't pick Warhorse up after the match he had. I mean, it wasn't the best match in the world, don't get me wrong, but there's a hell of a lot of hype on Warhorse at the moment. And it just seems like an obvious one for me. Plus, I have discussed in the past about potentially having these two as a tag team. Um, the Blade Runners, uh, for those of you who are a bit more classically minded in the class of wrestling, uh, the Blade Runners were a very early tag team between Sting and the Ultimate Warrior. Uh, I see, obviously, I think a lot of people do, see Darby Allen as a young Sting character. And I feel like Warhorse, I mean, just looking at him, he's got the face paint going as well, the style, is a young Ultimate Warrior style character. So to put these two together as the young Blade Runners could be a very interesting concept for us. But tonight, it's all about the one-on-one -on -one action. Uh, Darby Allen versus Warhorse. So I'm just writing down my piece of paper to make sure I keep track of the rankings and that sort of chassaz. Um And then what did I say it was? I said it was Joe versus Styles. And it was Jericho versus Bret Hart. Right. So quarterfinals tonight, like I said, so semifinals will be tomorrow. And then the finals will be on Friday. Then we've only got a one-day gap before we go into our next shows, which is going to be a Royal Rumble special. We're going to have a two-night show. We're going to have a Royal Rumble on night one. The winner of that Rumble will get a championship match on night two against the winner, of course, of this bowler tournament. And on night two, we will have a 30-woman Rumble. The winner will be crowned our first SW Women's Champion. So lots of action coming up this weekend. And then, of course, we're going to be crowning our first hardcore champion in February when we have the St. Valentine's Day Massacre Deathmatch Tournament. As well as some other stuff. I'm thinking of doing a Dusty Classic as well pretty damn soon to try and crown our first tag team champions. But that's going to be a much longer-winded show, I think. So I need to try and find the best time to do that. Um, I'll see how it goes. Warhorse now taken down. Darby Allen strikes him hard. I might just do the Dusty Classic like a bit of a mixture. Maybe I could do that. What could you possibly want? You've got everything in the world. Sorry, the cat's talking to me. Uh, right, Warhorse um, working down Darby here, dropping a knee right across the chest. But we know how hardy uh, Darby Allen is. He's not going to stay down unless he needs to. Warhorse up on top. Big double foot stomp. And I think he caught him more in the uh, more in the nutsack region than the actual uh, upper body. And it wasn't enough to get the victory, though. Double boots right in the stones were not enough to get the win. Warhorse now... Trying to get the uh, attention of the crowd. And that's very much why he's like. I think that's a bit like Oma Warrior was as well. He feeds off of the crowd. Warhorse now. Big powerbomb on Darby Allen. Nice trip as well. Taking Warhorse down. And Darby is... Uh, Trying to feed off the uh, the crowd's momentum himself now. Rocking the, the couple of clotheslines. Ducks underneath. In for the drop kick. Darby now starting to feel it. What? Don't look at me with that pretty face. Darby now rolling Warhorse up. One sec, I've got to go and uh, open the door for the cats because she's going to keep shouting until I do. Come on now. Once she starts, she just does not stop until I open the door. So I apologize for my brief interlude there. Warhorse now taking down Darby Allen. He's feeling this now. Brings Darby back up to his feet once again. Looks to run straight through him with that clothesline. Not quite enough. And Darby strikes back and then into that reverse DDT. Scorpion death drop, if you will.
Darby now dropping a boot right in the face of Warhorse. A boot in the gut as well and brings Warhorse back up before just strikes right in the ribs. And oh, look at that strong strike right in the face. That was brutal. Absolute brutality there by Darby Allen on Warhorse. And Darby just taking Warhorse apart now. So that Warhorse really had his big opportunity in Darby once again this time. Oh, nice stunner. Nice stunner on Warhorse goes to continue up, but Warhorse tries to hulk out but gets caught with the reverse neck breaker as well. Big strike right in the face and attempted clothesline just avoided. Darby now sends Warhorse into the corner once again. Spins him round. Up on top. What is Darby planning here? It's Darby Allen, so we know it's going to be stupidly crazy, isn't it? It's hard to think. This is a World Championship Tournament quarterfinals night. And uh, the exhibition match between Darby Allen and Warhorse could steal the show here. I say could, it is still in the show. Oh, what a German suplex on the outside on the solid wooden floor. Of course, this is not a realistic PWG arena because in realistic terms, there's no barrier and everyone's like stood up against the ring with their beers. It's an amazing con. If you've never watched the PWG show, it's an amazing concept. It's definitely worth a watch. It looks like the most fun wrestling show you can ever go and watch. Strong right hand once again. As again, Darby drops him in that stunner. I thought he was very well positioned there for a, a coffin drop, but Darby decides to go for the pin now instead for the one... Two. Oh, I need a two count. Nice shoulder block there by Warhorse taking Darby down. Big, strong right across the face. Darby fights back with an elbow in the face of Warhorse. And now Darby. Looks like he is actually going to go coffin drop now. He does go coffin drop now. And that should be enough to finish off Warhorse. There's the pin. One, two. No. Really? Okay. Okay, okay, okay. I really thought that was going to be enough, to be honest. Darby up top once again. Looking again for another coffin drop avoided. Warhorse trying to sneak a little win himself there. Heading up to the top, but oh, he didn't see Darby, did he? And Darby with that super arm drag taking him down. Darby now twisting the head of Warhorse. And we've still got two more quarterfinal matches for you after this one. Warhorse with a boot in the... I don't know like the gut, but I think he actually caught him in the arm there, to be honest, as Darby sending Warhorse off the ropes. Warhorse now hooking Darby up and drops him hard. There's the pin. This could be enough here for Warhorse to pick up the victory. And it is! Wow. This, I believe, was Warhorse's first ever appearance in an SWE show, and he comes out victorious with a big win over Darby Allen. There we go. Huge win here for Warhorse. And who knows, we could see more of this guy. I think what I'm considering doing is having like a next generation championship, which will be for the people that we think are going to make it big. Um, I mean, some of them are obvious. People like Adam Cole and people like that, you know are going to be at the upper echelons. But people like Darby Allen, uh, people like MJF, people that are, you know are going to be huge stars in the future. 
I think would be a good option there. Uh, but we're into our third quarter final match of the evening. This is AJ Styles versus Samoa Joe. The winner here will move into the semi-finals of this SWE Championship Tournament tomorrow. Alongside, of course, Bray Wyatt and Gazuchka Okada, who have already qualified. <sighs> Taking a sip of beer. Apologies. Samoa Joe now with the big, strong boots in the face of AJ Styles. So um, let's go through this again. So Samoa Joe made it here. He won the match of the, well, the battle of the Agile Big Men, where he defeated Keith Lee, Jeff Cobb, and Brian Cage, the machine. Whereas AJ Styles won the, uh, the battle of the old school Ring of Honor, I suppose, if you look at it that way. Alongside Seth Rollins, um, Daniel Bryan, and somebody else who shall remain nameless. Daniel Bryan, Seth, is it on my piece of paper? Maybe it's not, that was the day before. Daniel Bryan, Seth Rollins, and CM Punk. CM Punk. Um, so yeah, that was pretty cool. Uh, and it's obviously given us this amazing uh, match here, which we've seen in Ring of Honor, and of course we've also seen in To. I was going to say, I got mixed up there between a total, total non-stop action, or TNA if you will, and Impact. Um, have we seen it in uh, WWE yet? I'm not sure if we've... We haven't really seen... I don't think we've seen the AJ versus Joe Fuge yet, have we really? Which is crazy considering how well the guys know each other and how good that would be. I suppose there were Joe's injuries. We've not really seen a lot of Joe in general, have we really? Be nice to see Joe in the Rumble or something, to be honest. But as there's a calf crusher locked in very early on by AJ on Joe, could this be enough? Joe's quite a distance away from the ropes, but he uses his elbow to smash AJ right in the back to break it up. Ooh. Big elbow in the head there. Now AJ with Joe up on the shoulders and drops him in that big sidewalk slam. There's the pin for the one. Only a one count. AJ now on the other side of the ring. AJ looking for that phenomenal forearm. There's the big Uranagi slam by Joe, who's taken full control of this match now. Joe now stalking AJ Styles and locks him in with the Coquina clutch. This could be enough. This could be the clutch victory here for Samoa Joe to move through. No. Wow. Just shows how well these two know each other, doesn't it, from all these years. You've seen AJ Styles attempt a phenomenal forearm and Samoa Joe see it coming. And now you've seen AJ Styles break out of a Kokina clutch as well. Oh God, I've got hiccups now. So it makes you, re it makes you really wonder why... Um... No. It makes you really wonder what it's going to take to finish this one off. That's the words I'm looking for. Um, it's going to have to be something different, I think, to try and catch your opponent underway. Because when they know each other so much... Um... It's very difficult, isn't it, really? AJ now with the arm breaker on Joe. Very uh, clever words as well. Um, trying to damage the arm as much as he possibly can. Because um, obviously that reduces the pressure that can be locked in with the, uh, the, co the coquina clutch. I'm, I'm forgetting my words here now. Nice boots right in the face as well. AJ with the boot in the spine of Joe. Now heading up to the top. And looking for that spiral tap. He's not used that in such a long time. And that is the sort of thing that could surprise Joe, but not quite. AJ 
AJ now with Joe up on the shoulder, spins him round, drops him in a power bomb. There's the pin, only a two count. AJ in control of Joe. AJ now heading up into that tornado DDT. Like I said, trying to use different parts of their arsenal they don't normally use. Then again, it looks like AJ's looking potentially for another phenomenal forearm. And this, no, again, he misses. I thought he hit it there. Pin here by Joe. Only a one count. So that's two opportunities now. Two big opportunities that have both been uh, avoided there by Joe. Two times we've seen AJ go for that phenomenal forearm and two times we've seen it miss. Uh, but Joe locks in the Kokina clutch once again. AJ has done some work on the arm and, and, and uh, there you go. P proofs in the pudding there. Just I was saying that he's done some damage to the arm. He was able to break that free. Joe just hasn't got the strength in that arm after the damage that AJ's gone for. As AJ now rolling Joe through in for the uh, the calf crusher. But Joe very smartly holding on to the bottom rope using his foot. AJ with a pin, only a two count. AJ stalking Joe once again. Oh, is he going old school? He looks like he is. He's hooked him. He's up into the Styles Clash, middle of the ring. Surely this has got to be all now. One, two, and three. And AJ Styles does get the win, and he will move on with Bray Wyatt and Kazuchika Okada to the semi-finals of the SWE Championship Tournament. Boom. AJ Styles victorious. Looking like some uh, some good matches in the second in the semis. Bray Wyatt, Okada, Styles, and the winner of Bret Hart and Chris Jericho coming up next in our main event. As you can see, Joe not happy. I dare say this won't be the last time we see these two in the ring. And here he comes in, Chris Jericho, the winner of the Ruthless Aggression Style uh, Fatal 4 Way Elimination, which involved Benoit, Guerrero, Jericho, and Kurt Angle. Versus Bret Hart, who won the New Generation style Fatal 4-Way Elimination, which involved himself, of course, his uh, younger brother Owen Hart, as well as Mr. Perfect Kurt Hennig. And... I always forget one, don't I? Bret Hart, Owen Hart, Hennig, and... Shawn Michaels. Who can forget Shawn Michaels? I mean, the uh, it was a, a, a very justified finish, wasn't it, really, where we saw Brett make Shawn tap out to the sharpshooter. Retribution after all these years. All these years for the Montreal Screwjob. Referee trying to break them up there as Jericho using his, uh, his wiliness there to try and get an advantage. It does work as he takes the upper hand in this match, taking Brett down... Ducks underneath, but Brett fights back with a boot in the gut of Jericho and then looking for that running crossbody missed. Of course, I was discussing yesterday, weren't I, about uh, Canadian wrestlers and these two are possibly two of the best that Canada have exported in history. It's a shame of Brett though, isn't it really? I mean, if you, especially if you watch the Dark Side of the Ring episode, you probably know a bit more but Brett obviously was so big in the early 90s the mid 90s and WWE just could not afford his wages so he moved to WCW and they just did not use him correctly it just it, you took such an amazing talent and sort of ruined part of his career um, and that, that was a it's, it's a trouble it was a it was a it was a, such a shame to, to see Brett used in such that way I mean Brett's debut in the, I mean Brett was one of the biggest names in wrestling just after the Montreal Screwjob as well and the way WCW brought him in was as a special guest referee for a match that had nothing to do with him and it just it was a real weird way to bring him in it's like 
there's such a massive pop available. There's such a massive uh, narrative available with Bret Hart, and they just did not use it correctly at all. Bret now sending Jericho into the corner. Jericho hitting at spine first and bouncing back into the middle of the ring now as Bret continues the assault with a big boot across the face. There's the pin for the one. Only a one count. Brett now wrenching back at the arm of Jericho. Weakening that arm, and again, it's a very wise maneuver because obviously Jericho will need that arm to get the full pressure. You would think, you think, you would think on the uh, walls of Jericho. So by damaging that arm, I think you would, uh, yeah, you would definitely weaken it and not be able to really put as much pressure. I think both these guys, of course. Brett using the sharpshooter, Jericho with the walls of Jericho. You both need a very strong set of legs and a very strong set of arms for both of those maneuvers. So to damage your opponent in those ways would actually be a very smart move, I believe. Brett now spinning Jericho around with a running bulldog out the corner. A boot in the back of the head of Jericho as well as now... Brett heads up top, dropping the knees and the elbows across the, across, across the face of Jericho. Brett now brings Jericho back up and slams him back of the head first into the mat. There's the pin for the one, two, only a two count. Brett can't believe it. He thought he had the match won there. But if I was Brett, I'd be thinking, oh, he's thinking it himself anyway. So me and Brett think very similar as Brett now grabs a hold of Jericho. This is how Brett has won all these other matches so far with the sharpshooter. Will it be? It is enough for another one as well. Brett Hart continues his reign of dominance. That sharpshooter has been so brutal against everybody he's been in the ring against so far. And it helps him move through to the semi finals of the SWE Championship Tournament. There we go. Jericho not happy, as you can see. But Brett the Hitman Hart is victorious. And he moves on to tomorrow. So we've got Bray Wyatt, Okada, AJ Styles and Bret Hart in the semi-finals. And I will see you tomorrow night for those matches. Bye-bye.